don't pick up a gun unless you know how to use it. Aiming a weapon alone doesn't make it a deterrent. You're the angel of peace. Leave the guns to us. That was our agreement, remember? The army's leaving Costa Rica now. The mission is complete. Paz? that noise. What'd he do? <laughs> I should have killed you when I had the chance. Norad's nightmare is about to begin. What? Peace Walker determines retaliation targets based on Enemy nuclear strike data. That data can be sent to third parties as well. We got big problems, Snake. Coleman's activated the nuclear launch switch. What? And the target's Cuba? Yeah, but that's not it. The son of a bitch has screwed us all over. When Peace Walker was activated, it started transmitting the false data set. To NORAD. It's using a spread spectrum MLF signal. It can't be blacked out, even by EMP. There's no way to tell the difference between false data and the real thing on a radar screen. NORAD will have no idea it's all a ruse generated by Peace Walker. They'll think it's a real Soviet attack. They'll pass on the data to the National Military Command Center. And Washington will have to choose whether or not to retaliate. This could get ugly. Unless we stop it, we're looking at a retaliatory chain reaction. No! No need to panic. The nightmare will end soon enough. What do you mean? Coldman's aim is for the bureaucrats in Washington to see the importance of a machine like Peace Walker. He's trying to prove that humans don't possess the will to launch nukes. Everything will be fine. They'll never retaliate. They're only human. Kaz, where's the president? Last I heard he was in the middle of SALT II negotiations in Vladivostok. With the President gone, Nuclear Launch Authority passes to the next person in the chain of succession. The Vice President's gone too, so after him comes the Speaker. President. Vice President. Not one among them has the courage to push the button. No one willing to enter history as the Great Destroyer. In the end, it's not their lives that people value most. It's their reputations. The bureaucrats in Washington may not be able to retaliate. Peace Walker, on the other hand. She's loyal to the mission above all. And she's well aware that guaranteed retaliation is essential for nuclear deterrence to work. Peace Walker is the perfect deterrent. Cuba would not have been my choice of target. But you can't make peace without breaking the few eggs. <laughs> now that Peace Walker has the false data, retaliation is inevitable. Are you insane? You think it'll end there? You're about to unleash all-out nuclear war. Somebody find out what's going on at NORAD. Mammal's got a connection to NORAD. We could monitor it with the right equipment. I've got you covered. I've got NORAD on the line. Sir, we're tracking unidentified targets. Current apogee, 20 degrees. Estimated time of re-entry is 2250 Zulu. Have you contacted the president? Coverall is not responding. Warning system checks out. No corresponding natural signatures. Data is assessed as reliable. Cut the data transmission. We can't say for sure Washington isn't going to retaliate. The only one who knows 
The abort code is me. I die. And no one can turn it off. Even if they do strike back, I'll already be dead. I can only pray that my theory here, my peace, is proven right. Go to DEFCON 3. Get Zack on the phone. This is Crystal Palace. Stand by for an emergency meeting. They're at DEFCON 3. The false data and the nukes are both coming from the same source. We have to stop Peace Walker. The only way is to destroy her. She's entered launch mode. Peace Walker's rendered her judgment. The target is Cuba. Snake, don't let it launch the nuke.
moving. Snake, you did it. You stopped the launch. Yuri, how's NORAD? Not good. BMUSE continues to track the targets on radar. The SP satellite status is green. Still assessing as reliable. Chairman of the Joint Chiefs, a representative of the Secretary of Defense and Congress have arrived at NMCC. You've only damaged the drive system. The data uplink still intact. We've got 1,500 Soviet ICBMs crossing the North Pole. Target region is confirmed as the west coast of the United States. Go to DEFCON 2. Prepare to launch ICBMs. How do I make it stop? 
Peace Walker is a fully autonomous system. Unlike the other machines you fought, its command authorities are all located inside its cerebrum, the Mammal Pod. We've got to stop the Mammal Pod. I don't have the abort code either. Coldman was the only one. Snake, destroy the AI inside the Mammal Pod. The inner barrier protecting the Mammal Pod is designed to be as strong as a bomb shelter. What's it gonna take to get through? I guess an atomic bomb will do it. You trying to be funny? No, I'm telling you, that armor was designed to withstand a nuclear war. We can't get through to the President. The decision is on us. You can't be serious. There's no way I'm gonna wipe out the human race. This is the President's call. There's no time for that. We need a decision now. Huey, call NORAD. We have to tell them the nukes aren't real. I'll give it a shot. Forget the order of succession. If we're all going to hell, let's take those bastards with us. We have 12 minutes to impact, sir. May God have mercy on our souls. Jesus. Coldman guessed wrong. They're gonna go through with it! The platform sustained a lot of external damage. All we need is some pressure. Pressure? Sink it in the lake! Without much water pressure, even the tiniest crack should be enough to flood the innards. The AI pod is a mass of highly sensitive electronics. Short the contacts and the signal will stop. How much does that thing weigh? 500 tons. It's hopeless. We can't move that thing. Get NORAD on the phone. Incoming MERV warheads have separated. Estimated time to impact now, 11 minutes. Sir, we've got a call. The President? No, sir. Then who? He, um... Spit it out! He claims to be Big Boss. Big Boss? Patch him through! Mr. Chairman, I'll get straight to the point. Cancel the retaliatory strike now! What? The radar blips you're seeing are all fakes. No one's launched any nukes. How do you know? The launch data is fake. Part of an experiment that leaked. You weren't supposed to receive it. Your radar is showing missiles that don't exist. If you're lying, then we've got ten minutes till we're toast. We have to retaliate or more Americans die. The experiment was planned and executed by the CIA station chief in Central America. Then put him on! He's dead. I can give you his name, though. We need more than the authentication code you gave the switchboard. We need proof you're actually Big Boss. Do you have any? <sighs> All right. If you know the name Big Boss, then maybe you were there at the ceremony when I received the title from President Johnson. Indeed I was. We don't have time for this bullshit! Hold it! Let's hear him out. You were saying? At the ceremony, the DCI tried to shake my hand. I refused. What happened in that room is classified, top secret. Only a handful of people would know. He's making it up! Don't listen to it! Wait! Why did you refuse to shake his hand? Because I knew where my loyalty belonged. Everybody, listen to me. Those Soviet missiles are fakes. What? You're actually going to believe him? He's right. This is some sort of commie trick. No, it's the real big boss. Trust me. How can you know for sure? Because I was the army chief of staff back then, and I was standing right next to the DCI when it happened. I saw everything. <clears throat> you saved us all, big boss. We'll stand down the alert. <sighs> Thank you. When we meet again, I hope you'll shake my hand. Oh! What are you doing? Sorry, Chairman, but we are not standing down. Damn it! Those worthless sacks of... Opening. She's calling to you. Destroy the mammal pod and the data will stop flowing. Please stop her. I've been waiting, Snake, for a long time. Waiting for your birth, your growth, and the finality of today. Boss. 
I did my raise you and shape you into the man you are today, just so we could face each other in battle. A soldier's skills aren't made to find separate frames. So then, what is time? Is there such thing as an absolute timeless enemy? There is no such thing, and never has been. And the reason is that our enemies are human beings like us. They can only be our enemy. The world must be made whole again. The philosophers must be reunited. I will devote my skills to that purpose. And with the Colonel's money, I will achieve that end. Just as I once created the class. The data uplinks bypassing the mammal pod. Put down the gun! Come to your senses, man! The fate of the world, the fate of the Earth is at stake here! Why? I don't understand. Answer me! Tell me why! Answer me! Authority rests with me now. I'm ordering a retaliation! No! Don't! It's the end of us all! Who gives a damn? I'm not gonna sit here and die like a dog! If the Russians are gonna kill my family, destroy my country, I'm taking them with me! You see now, Chairman. Deterrence is just a fool's dream! Why? Why won't it stop? Sometimes the body continues to live even after the brain is damaged. The boss AI isn't doing this. I think it's something rather more primitive. Reptile has taken up Mammal's dying wish. No. Stop it. Don't just sit there. Stop it! Nick, you have to stop that data from being sent.
When the human brain is damaged, sometimes it recovers over time. Other parts of the brain take over the functions of the damaged parts. Mammal and reptile were patterned after different parts of the human brain. When those parts were assembled together into one, they must have become capable of functional compensation. It's clearly not thinking rationally. It's not using its head. It's using its heart. This is the fate she chose for herself. <sighs> the boss's innocence has been proven. Do you hear it, Snake? Hear the boss's song. <laughs> you saw it, didn't you? When you went to space, that there's beauty outside of battle. At last, I understand. In the end, it was you who put down your gun and chose instead to sing. They can all hear you. I know they can. And your will shall surely live on. That's what you wanted. So much that you gave up everything you had. But you couldn't achieve it. Isn't that right? And still, all you can do is sing. 
There's no peace to be found anywhere. And so we can only keep on hoping. Hoping for the illusion we call peace. Snake, you still here? Come on. Let's go back. I'm not going back. Huh? I'm done. Snake, you don't mean... I'm done looking for the truth. What are you saying, Snake? I was wrong. Come on, boss. Everybody's waiting for you. She betrayed me, Kaz. She what? In the end, she put down her gun. And when she did, she rejected her entire life up to that point. Including me. What do you mean? In giving up her life, she abandoned everything she was as a soldier. And you consider that betrayal? I won't make the same choice as her. My future is going to be different. Then... That's right. From now on, call me Big Boss. Got a sex, Snake? What's up? It's about Paz. You know she doesn't have any family. She got a scholarship thanks to Zdornov and was living at the dorms, but he was KGB. All signs are her scholarship came from the KGB too. Even if they let him go, she's not going to be seeing any more money. It wouldn't have been much anyway. So, I was wondering, what about letting her stay here for a while? What does she think? She says she wants to help out. It would only be temporary. She's still in shock. Right now, no one understands her better than we do. Okay, but Kaz, don't take your eyes off her. What do you mean? It won't be easy getting used to this kind of life. I know, Snake. I'm not trying to turn her into one of us. You should talk to her yourself later. Okay. And, uh, Dr. Strangelove wants to come too. Strangelove? Well, she's out of a job now, and she'd have a problem returning to England. You can talk to her about it. Anyway, you don't need me to tell you how good she'd be for R&D. We've got a problem. Zdornov's not in his cell. What? He must have used his prosthetic as a blowtorch to cut through the bars. But we've managed to narrow down his location using a transmitter we planted on him. I'm adding a new mission. Find the KGB agent Zdornov. Find Zdornov and bring him back here with Fulton Recovery. Fulton recovery subject confirmed onboard helicopter. I'm seeing things. Start talking. Search every inch of that area.
Try using Fulton recovery on him. Okay, you're done with that area. Head for the goal. Hard. What are you up to anyway? Just going for a stroll. Kaz, I've got Zadordov returning home. Acknowledge, Snake. Package for you, boss. What? Yeah. Looks like a cassette tape. Don't worry, it's clean. No trace of explosives or anything. Return address just says Eva. Eva. Someone you know? Uh, an old uh, acquaintance. Oh, the plot thickens. Tidings from an old flame? Don't start, Kaz. Anyway, I'll check it out later. Okay, just don't go running off after this chick. We can't afford for you to be distracted right now. Hello, Snake. It's been a while, hasn't it? I hear you've been causing quite the ruckus in Nicaragua. Nothing much to report from my end. The legacy is being put to good use, or so they tell me. But enough with the small talk. There's something I need to tell you. You saw the photo that came with this tape, right? The boss gave that to me, ten years ago. <laughs> I'm sorry, I should have told you sooner. I probably should have told you right away. But sending it to you hasn't been an easy decision to make. It's taken me ten years. Once you've heard what I have to say, you'll understand why. That photo belonged to her. I know what you're thinking. What does she have to do with this? You've probably seen it a hundred times in the press already. Obviously, it's of the Mercury 7, the first group of American astronauts, the heroes of Project Mercury. But there were actually eight people in that photo. One of them was edited out, erased, without a trace. That eighth astronaut, the one airbrushed out of existence, that was her, Snake. Now why did they need to keep her existence a secret? What were they trying to hide? The answer goes back even further. Seventeen years ago. It was the height of the Cold War. The Eastern and Western blocs were racing to develop space technology to match their nuclear arsenals. In 1957, the Soviet Union launched Sputnik 1, the first artificial satellite. The Americans were stunned. They'd been led to believe their country led the world in science and technology. That shock quickly turned into fear. If the Russians had the know-how to launch a satellite into space, they could use it to launch a nuclear missile, too. Frantic, the U.S. threw everything it had into the space race. The following year, the Army succeeded in launching the first American satellite, Explorer 1. The National Aeronautics and Space Administration was established that fall, and Project Mercury with it. The goal was to send a man into space, and seven men were chosen as pilot candidates. The media dubbed them the Mercury Seven. They were immediately hailed as national heroes, icons of Western space exploration. But after Explorer, America suffered a series of failed rocket launches. Desperate, the government made a fateful decision. Unable to wait for its space program to mature, they'd steal the Soviets' technology, at the same time sabotaging their space program. You know better than anyone how hard a mission that was. The Soviet space program was shrouded in secrecy. Recovering that information would be no easy task. Using the help of an insider, they'd insert a sleeper agent into the research institute or else recruit one of those insiders to do the job for them. And if necessary, the mission leader would have to go in and sort things out themselves. Someone was needed with experience, knowledge, 
and superior intuition. And the only one for the job was the boss. The president himself asked for her by name. He needed someone who could be trusted with the fate of a nation. Who else to turn to but the hero of the Second World War? It was June 1959. So you see, Snake, that's why she left. That was the top secret mission that took her from you. But her selection ruffled a few CIA feathers. They didn't appreciate the president going over their head like that. The mission was tough enough already, and now the CIA was dragging its feet. She couldn't get anything out of them. No manpower, no information. Left to her own devices, the boss made a decision she knew would come back to haunt her. She decided to tap into the philosopher's network. And that's when the wheels of fate began to turn. Snake! I'm proud to announce that preparations for Metal Gear Zeke are complete. We can activate it any time. Got it. Thanks, Huey. No need to thank me. At least now I can finally say I helped you with something. Be sure to take it out for a field test. Okay. You can change weapons and check memory boards just like before. Use your observations from a field test to make any adjustments. A work in progress, huh? There's something I need to discuss with you, boss. Get to the point, Kaz. We recovered the nuclear warhead that was loaded onto Peace Walker from the bottom of Lago Kosibolka. What? Warheads are radioactive, even if they're relatively stable. If we just left it there, it would contaminate the lake or fall into the hands of terrorists. Creating another crisis. Right. So while the White House is figuring out how to cover its ass, I thought we'd take some precautions. What did you have in mind? Load it onto Zeke. What? What else would we do with it? Zeke is our deterrent. To protect ourselves from nuclear attack, we need a nuclear weapon ourselves. Ah. Uh. Of course, if you're not on board, we can always dispose of it. But it won't be easy getting another nuke. This is a golden opportunity. We can always get rid of it later. Load it onto some fishing boat and leave it out in the middle of the ocean. No one would ever know it's there. But if you want to get rid of it, boss, we'll get rid of it. No. Don't. As long as there are nukes out there. We need one ourselves if we're going to be a world power. I knew you'd see it that way, boss. So as long as we stand apart from nations, we need something to put us on equal footing. In a way, MSF is a country itself. And we just became the world's seventh nuclear power. Nuclear power. How's Paz doing? Okay so far. Still shocked about being lied to by Zadornov. But she's actually getting along great with the crew here at Mother Base. Really? That's good to hear. Still, it's gotta be depressing for a girl her age to be cooped up on an offshore plan all day. Even if it is only temporary. I bet she'd love it if you took her out somewhere once in a while. Kept you waiting, huh? No, it is okay. You're going to take a picture of me? Nice one. Yeah! I have a favor to ask you, Snake. Name it. I want you to give me a job here. I want to help out. You sure? You just went through a hell of a time. You should probably take it easy until you're settled. Thank you. But there must be something I can do. You would not want me near a gun. But I am a decent cook. Now there's a skill we can use. Put me on the mess hall team. I think I can handle it. Once I get used to it, I will even add in some Costa Rican recipes. Sounds like a plan. So, you live alone now? No, not alone. I've been living in school dormitories since I started junior high. After my mother died, my relatives took me in, but they were not my real family. You didn't fit in there. In a way. My aunts were kind to me and all. But I know how difficult it must have been to suddenly have a child thrust into their lives. When you live with someone, there are no secrets. I could tell my being there was a burden on them. Hmm. Sounds like a rough childhood. 
I would not say that. I was lucky just to have people take me in. There were funnels living out in the streets because their mothers died. It is even worse in countries with frequent civil wars. So, who am I to complain about my childhood? You're a pretty tough kid, you know. Not at all. I am not strong at all. Bad news, Snake. Zidornov's on the loose. What? Again? It's funny. We took away his prosthetic and did a full body check. We even increased the guard. Ah, give me a break. I hate to entertain the thought, but this might be an inside job. <sighs> what the hell's he after, anyway? No clue. Can't imagine he's just out to annoy us, though. You know, it might not be worth keeping him here if he's not gonna join us. You may be right. I thought it might boost our Russian compatriots' morale, but... Okay, I'll think it over. Let's hope he's just playing hide-and-seek. I've added a new mission. Go get Zadornov. Sorry, I just... No, he's okay. <laughs>